We're out here in the front garden again today. I wanted to just show you some of the beautiful things that are are uh, changing in the garden and coming out and and just share with you some of the beauty, the simple beauty. The roses have bloomed. They're popping out. I haven't read them of the black spot, but I've got it under control. I've been spraying them as recommended on the label, and I've been uh, battling some of that black spot, but they're looking good. I think what I'm gonna do next year is as soon as they come out of the ground, I'm gonna start spraying that fungicide and not wait until I see spots. This garden is certainly filled out. I have not been able to uh, get in here and weed like I wanted to, but it's filling in with all of its beautiful perennial flowers that come up in this bed. The foxglove has come up. I love that cream color. And look what we have here. We have the beautiful showy clematis opening up. This is the Nellie Moser clematis. And you see those big, beautiful blooms. Here's my hand. You see how big that bloom is. It's really big. That's one of the reasons I love these things. The flowers are beautiful. We were able to get it up off the ground before it bloomed <laughs> on this trailer trellis that we picked up at Tractor Supply. Those red roses are looking pretty against the house. Still looking for a trellis solution for this uh, climbing rose that's here on the side of the house. Donald's got it propped up with the push broom. We had a trellis up here, and then when we had the house painted, they, it was uh, connected up there to the top where the boards of the house were, and they took it down to paint. And uh, Donald just went ahead and took it down, thought it was old and outdated and needed a new one, and of course we haven't got the new one put up. And here this thing is, it's blooming and it has no trellis, but it doesn't deter from the beauty of it. One bit does it. It's propped up with a push broom. This trellis uh, is on the list of things to be done, the never ending list of things to be done. That beautiful, beautiful rose. I've had these roses for so long. I've been trying to think of the company that I ordered these roses from and I can't think of it to save my life. That's why I started a garden journal uh, years ago so that I would remember. But I've, of course, the things that were done before that garden journey, if I don't remember them, then I've just lost, lost the uh, details about the plannings of things. But um, I do have a garden journal now, and that's the reason I have a garden journal is so that I can remember what it is that I've done when I planted and what I planted and where I ordered things from. You know, just, just it's just good to remember those things in case you want to order again or you want to share with somebody where you got them. These are amaryllis. These amaryllis, Donald and I stopped at a sale years ago. I mean, I'm talking probably 35 years ago. We stopped at a sale and bought one little pot of these amaryllis from a neighbor who had plenty of them. And when these things bloom, I can't wait to share them with you. They have a beautiful orangey reddish bloom on them. But they come back every year and they grow outside. I actually at one time had my flower beds all around the house full of these. And I dug them all up and I gave them all to friends. And I just kept this one little section here because I wanted to put other things in my garden. But I'm telling you, the mass planting of these, this type of amaryllis was beautiful. These are Donald's honeysuckles. He loves honeysuckles. I actually harvest some of these honeysuckle flowers and uh, use them, the dried flowers, in making some of the, the things that I make with them. But this is his uh, 
honeysuckle here. This is the one plant he requested that was in the garden. And here it is. <laughs> it's right here beside the gate. Good morning, Ollie. And of course, the wisteria is on the other side of the gate. And uh, we really have to work hard to keep this wisteria trimmed, you know, so that it doesn't go over to the neighbor's property. And it's, it's a lot of work. But this little garden right now is just in, we haven't got much hatting. This is where the compost stays. Right here, uh, this is our main, we call it the corner compost. We've got our garden compost, I mean the kitchen compost that sits at the back door, and we've got uh, the compost that we've used to, um, you know, we've let that tree de uh, deteriorate that we had cut down. We've got that wood chip compost there in the middle, and then uh, here's the corner compost. So we've got three compost piles going. Um, here on this quarter of an acre and it's an ongoing thing here we do compost and reuse ollie's saying good morning this is a good dog right here <laughs> he's guarding the gate he hears mama out in the front garden and he don't know why he can't come out But this little garden, I hope to get started on it. It'll probably be midsummer or late summer before I actually get started on this little garden. It also has a stone border. It's got the roses and a wisteria. And there's things that need to be cut down out of there. And that wheelbarrow that has the uh, black pots in it, I'm actually going to plant in that wheelbarrow. Um, I'm just going to buy bags of potting soil and plant beautiful flowers in that. But that's a project for another day. There are things here in the front yard I've got to get done before I can start on those. It's like my projects are never done. I mean, the gardens are never done. It's always an ongoing project. And you know, we live here and we have children that play. Our little grandchildren play. There's their fairy garden. It's right here up under the eave of the house. And this is where they play. They have gravel and sand and toys. It's called a fairy garden, but you can see there's other things in it. And this is real life. This is real play for our grandchildren. This is where mem memories are made. This is what they enjoy. And I can't get so uh, caught up in the aesthetic of keeping everything uh, neat and beautiful and uh, in order that I don't let those grandchildren enjoy and play now there are the little um, hanging baskets that I've got there. And I put that uh, Creeping Jenny in it and I planted seeds around. Well, the seeds are coming up. They are sprouting. I've got a little green here. Uh, they're the blanket flower. and But the blanket flower takes a little while for it to come out and bloom. I actually should have put something with a little more color in it around it but i'm going to leave them like they are this year and keep that in consideration next year that's the knockout rose and it's always beautiful there's no black spot on it there's no diseases that get on this that i know of you know we're organic so we don't spray a lot of anything i like to keep it as natural as i possibly can but look at this knockout rose you don't see a single black spot on it and that thing is not a disappointment it blooms beautifully all year, uh, all summer long. Here's Lake Spring and it's popped out and it'll have big, beautiful blooms on it all summer. It, we did have it here close to the house last year. Donald dug this up and moved it because it got so big and it was so right there at the walkway that we had to make the space. So he put it out here and wow, it's beautiful. What a good, what a good decision that was. That thing has not been a disappointment. Here's the echinacea. Now I moved as much echinacea as I could from this sidewalk here. I've, um, I've had echinacea for years. You know, I use that herb. I dry it and use, use that herb. I use the flower, the leaves, the stems, the roots. I use all of it. So it's something, it's a staple in my garden. And 
not only is the herb wonderful, but the flower and the leaves to me are absolutely beautiful. But uh, it's, I guess, some seeds. It, these are biennials, so you'll have uh, to plant your echinacea from seed. If you're starting from seed, it'll be green for a year and then it'll bloom the second year. And then from then on, it'll be a perennial, you'll have it. It'll come back every year. But I never would have planted anything this close to the sidewalk, this echinacea. So evidently, this echinacea has come up on its own and it's escaped me the last year and here it is. And I'll probably have to move it. I had two over here that I did move into the middle of the garden, but there's still some over here and that's okay. I'll take that beautiful echinacea gift and I'll move it into the center there. And um, that's the goal for this is just a cottage garden. That's, uh, that's my style as an informal cottage garden. And so here you're gonna have, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna have a lot of things. We've got the uh, daffodil that has come up and bloomed. And of course now it's just getting some uh, nutrients. The uh, tulips over there, they were beautiful this year. I usually don't have any luck with tulips. That's the first year that they they bloomed as pretty as they did, and that's the reason I didn't have any more of them than I had. But I am going to have to uh, maybe lay down these uh, daffodil stalks and lay down those tulip stalks. I never cut them off. I just fold them over and lay them down and maybe put a stone on them to hold them down and then let the things that are coming and growing around them. Uh, and that's uh, the cottage garden. You've got things that are fading out that were blooming early spring, and then you've got the things that are coming up in late spring and then we'll have the summer blooming things now i planted these uh, foxglove which is a highly poisonous plant and i'm very careful when i plant anything that i know is poisonous uh, this actually is a it's a digitalitis digitalis it affects the heart uh, they use it as a heart medication so i'm very careful about this this plant here that none of the kids eat it or um, mess with it but uh i just so love and enjoy this foxglove flower i just love them so i started seed uh the year before last and i had these seeds and i put them out into the garden and this year here are the foxgloves and this cream color i thought was so pretty i'm trying to focus on paint uh planting light colored things white and cream colors uh so that they show up, that they show up here better. Now the ranunculus, it's, it's still blooming beautiful, but it's fading out a little bit. And it has been glorious, and I have enjoyed that. My daughter gave me those bulbs. I've never had those in my garden before. And so just putting these in the garden this year has been such a treat to me. And of course, I put them right here where the steps are. So when I come out the door or come in the door, there they are in all their glory and all their beauty. And I have so enjoyed them. What a beautiful, beautiful gift she gave me. And then here I've got the peony. The peonies are blooming. I see one coming out, or maybe two starting to bloom. And those are glorious, beautiful flowers. The peony, what a big, beautiful blessing that thing is. I had this one that snuck up in the fairy garden back here and the kids saw it before I did. It's back here blooming. See, it's behind the, the clematis there and the roses. So it snuck up on me and I didn't catch it first coming out. But the kids were telling me there was a big old beautiful pink ball of flower out here <laughs> and that I had to come and see it. So this is a different colored peony. This one is uh, dark pink. Now, because my peonies are gifts, they've been gifts, I, uh, we got one from Donald's mother who uh, had dug, dug them up at a friend's house. I think that's the dark pink ones. And then we have this one that I dug up from my sister-in-law's house. And it had been there for, you know, probably 70 years. So I don't know the names of them because they were gifts and they were uh, given from very old houses. But I could do some research and find out what kind of peonies I have here. And hopefully I can share that with you later. 
I love the curve of this stone border right here. I love the way Donald uh, shaped that. That was beautiful to me. The daisies are blooming. Very beautiful. Simple, beautiful. Excellent choice for a cottage garden. Still got my wayward um, clematis over here. It's still, you know, hanging on here and, and growing over here. Um, I might have to work with that a little this evening to try to get, to get this thing to grow back up its uh, trellis. Now see, it's beautiful here. It's growing right up its trellis. It's going to bloom right here and be beautiful. It's got this offshoot here on it. And what I don't want to do is put them together and crowd them up too close. So I'll have to work with it a little bit to try to get this thing trained up its trellis. And doing what it needs to be doing. I think my dilemma here, like I planted this uh, clematis over on that bed trellis. I made a trellis out of a, an old bed headboard. And that's where that clematis was originally planted. But evidently, one of the stalks grew this way. One of the vines of this clematis grew forward and was up under the soil and took root. So this is how it got over here. And of course, I'm not going to destroy this beautiful thing. I mean, I love it. It's, uh, the clematis is absolutely a beautiful vining flower, flowering vine that's... Uh, a delight in my garden so I'm not going to destroy it but I'm trying to work with it the way that it is here's our container that we potted up with our impatience and our little uh, they're called coxcomb I know that's not the Latin name for them but there they are they're looking good love the red the snowball bush is in its last uh, days of flowering it's probably its last week. It might hold on a little longer, but I'm thinking this week would probably be its last week that we'll see flowers on this. Here's our cuttings that we're rooting. Those elderberries are doing great. The um, camellias are actually doing great too. They're not looking as good, but their, their little roots are, are in there really well. So we, we're, we've got that going on. My little crabapple trees here that I've got to repot this year. They're growing and getting really big. This is their third year. I'm hoping to plant at least one or two of them here on the property. Find a place to plant them. Starting to move some of the indoor plants out here. Finding room for them will be a dilemma. Of course, I keep them over here on the shaded side of the house, on the north side of the house, so that they're not, you know, getting beat down with sun that they're not used to. My house is not real bright, and I try to keep them, you know, consistently in the light area so that when I bring they're not shocked. I still got a few impatience. I got a plant over here in the potting area. I wanted to plant this beautiful old watering can. Uh, I usually have some kind of little plant in it, so it's over here, and I'm, uh, I'm going to stick something down in that. I've got a little uh, container of thyme, and then I have these impatience, so I'm trying to decide which of the two am I going to plant in this old vintage watering can. Here are some more of the container gardens that s sit over here on the side of the house, that beautiful begonia. I've got the elephant ears coming up right here in this pot. They may need a bigger pot this year. I've got to hang this basket. I planted it and I put the hook here. But the thing was, when I put the basket up on it, it was so heavy it just bent the hook forward. So I'm going to have to find a different solution for that. For that hanging basket. We got the front door painted. It's drying. That's enamel paint, so it takes a little bit for it to dry. Of course, it's a little beat up. You know, that's the same door we've had for 40 years coming in and out here in the front of the house. But we did get it painted. 
it is really hard for us to complete a project unless it's um, you know, a priority, something that's hazardous or just necessary. We do our projects in small little patches because there's so much going on and because we have the grandchildren that come and there's just things that you can't drag out and get done when you, when you have a lot of kids around. So for their health and safety and for ours, we're just, we do our projects in little um, time segments. It's hard for us to get them anything done all at once. So that's the porch makeover, you know, is gonna be a summer porch makeover. So I've got to get that done here, you know, before summer. <laughs> but thank you for letting me show you around and show you the changes in the garden, front garden this morning. Thank you for joining me like always. Until next time.